Hi and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson we're going to be discussing sequences and series and the nth term test. This is part of the video series on sequences and series. In the first two videos we discussed monotonic, boundedness, convergence, and divergence. If you need to review any of those topics, please go back and look at those first two videos. Let's start with an arithmetic sequence. We have in our sequence numbers 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. What you should notice is that there is a constant difference between the terms of the sequence. In other words, if you add 3 to 2, you get 5. Add 3 again, you get 8. And continually add 3, you'll get all the terms of the sequence. Let's take a look at these terms of the sequence on a graph. Now remember with sequences, we're using the set of natural numbers for our domain. So our first term of the sequence was 2, so that gave us the ordered pair 1, 2. Our second term was 5, so we have the ordered pair 2, 5, and so on. Looking at this graph, you can see that there is a linear relationship between the set of natural numbers and the terms of our sequence. That's going to happen any time that you have a constant difference between your terms. We also know that all linear functions are unbounded. So these terms of the sequence will continue to go up to infinity as our set of natural numbers goes to infinity. Now that's going to be true for all arithmetic sequences. They're all going to have a linear relationship. So they're all going to be unbounded. And if a sequence is unbounded, then we say that it diverges. Okay, so now what we want to do is look at the sum of the terms of the sequence, or what we call a series. We're going to take the terms of the sequence and add them together. So our first term was just 2, but the sum of the first two gives us 7, which gives us the second term in the series. The sum of the first three is 15, so that's our third term of the series, and so on. So let's go ahead and take a look at these on a graph. So when we're looking at the numbers 2, 7, 15, 26, and 40, that's a list of our partial sums. We're going to continue to go on forever listing out those partial sums. Now remember that when we graphed our sequence, we said the set of natural numbers as our input values and our sequence values as the output values. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the terms of the series. So notice that they do have the point 1, 2 in common. Then we went to 7 for our series because we're adding 2 and 5. And then to 15, 26, and 40. What you can probably reasonably see is that if the terms of the sequence go off to infinity, then the terms of the series must also go to infinity. So if this sequence diverges, the series must diverge as well. Okay, so essentially what we're looking at is what the limit of the sequence is. If the limit of the sequence does not exist, then it's going to diverge. If the limit of the sequence diverges, then the series must diverge as well. Let's look at another example, and this one's not arithmetic. We have the formula n to the third over n squared plus 2 that represents our sequence. So let's use our formula to find a few terms of the sequence. Plugging in a 1, we get out 1 third. Plugging in a 2 for n, we get 8 6 or in lowest terms, 4 thirds, then 27 11 and so on. Now, we can't really tell too well what's happening with these terms of the sequence, but let's go ahead and use La Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit. So we're going to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So that's going to equal the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n squared over 2n. Since we really haven't simplified it that much to see what's going on, let's take the derivatives again. So we get 6n over 2, and that's going to simplify to 3n. 
So as n goes to infinity, 3n is going to go to infinity as well. So this sequence is diverging, going off to infinity. Since the terms of the sequence go to infinity, so must the terms of this series. So the series must diverge. Now we did all that without even looking at the series. We're just using the sequence to help us get information about the series. But let's go ahead and look at the terms of the series to see what happens. I'm going to add together and terms of the sequence and find our list of partial sums. So our first term is one third. The first two terms add together to give us five thirds. The first three terms add together to give us 136 over 33 and so on. It's still kind of difficult to see what's happening with the numbers in the series. So let's put them in decimal form. So we have about 0.3, about 1.67, 4.12, and it looks like those numbers are going to continue to grow. 12.306, and that's going to be a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. Okay, so if the limit of the nth term of the sequence does not exist, then the series diverges. Right? So again, we're using the sequence to help us find information about the series. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have 1 over n plus 2 that represents the terms of our sequence. Let's go ahead and find the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, as n goes to infinity, 1 over n is going to go to 0. So all we're left with is the 2. So it looks like this one has a limit. So let's go ahead and look at it on a graph. It does seem that the points are going to 2. So we do have a limit of 2 for this sequence. Let's look at the sum of the sequence. So we're taking the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 2. Let's list out our list of partial sums. So we have 3, 11 halves, 47 over 6, and so on. Again, it's kind of hard to see what's happening with those numbers, so let's put them in decimal form. And you can kind of see that the numbers are continuing, continuing to increase. Looking on our graph, it looks like the series is increasing as well, continuing to increase. So what I did was figured out what the sum of the first 50 terms are. And I got about 104.5. Then I said, well, let's see what happens to the first 100 terms, and I get 205.2. So it definitely looks like the terms of the series are continuing to increase. If your terms of your series are going to converge onto a specific number, you're going to see that number very quickly. You wouldn't have to even go out 100 terms to see where it's, what number is approaching. Okay, so in this case, the sequence converged, but the series diverged. Let's look at another example. We have 2 plus n minus 1 over n squared. So let's go ahead and find the limit of this nth term of the sequence. Now we know that the limit of 2 is simply 2, and the limit of 1 over 2n is going to go to 0. So our limit is 2. So we want to find out something about the sum or the series. So we want to look at the sum from 1 to infinity of 2 plus n minus 1 over n squared. Let's find out what the first 10 terms add up to. So I got around 21. Let's look at the first 50 terms. And I got 103 approximately. And the first 100 terms I got 203. So this looks like it's definitely going off to infinity as well. So in this case we had a sequence that converged, but the series diverges. Okay, let's look at our next example. And we discussed this in an earlier video, so um, we worked out the limits and everything on the previous video. 
but we'll go over here as well. So we have the limit as um, n goes to infinity of n over e to the n. And I took the derivative of the numerator and the denominator and got 1 over e to the n. And that's going to go to 0. Now you can verify that by looking at the terms of the sequence and seeing that, yes, they look like they're going to 0. So let's go ahead and look at the sum as well. The sum of the terms of the series of the sequence is going to give us the terms of the series. So you have 0 0.36, 0 0.64, 0 0.79, and so on. These numbers are growing very, very slowly. So let's go ahead and look at the sum of the first 50 terms. And I get 0 0.92. And then when I went to find the sum of the first 100 terms, I got the same number. So obviously they're rounded, but they're rounded out to so many decimal places that you really can't tell the difference. So it looks like it's going to some number for sure um, around 0.92. So this one is going to converge. So in this case, the sequence converged and the series converged. What you should notice about this one is that the sequence converged to zero. And that's what's causing our series to converge as well. So you really need to have the sequence converged to zero in order for the series to possibly converge. All right, let's look at one more example and see that this is working. So we have one half to the n. As n goes to infinity, one half to the n is going to go to zero. And you can look at the terms of the sequ sequence in order to figure that out. Okay, so let's look at the sum of those terms. What you should notice is that those numbers look like they're coming in close to 1. So let's look at the sum of the first 25 terms. I got a number really close to 1. So I went to 50 terms and I got 1 on my calculator. So it went out to so many decimal places that it came out to 1. So again, in this case, my limit of my sequence was going to 0. So my series converges. So what we can say is that if the limit of the sequence does not go to zero, then the series diverges. We have to do a little bit more work and run some more tests to find out whether the series is going to converge or not. But at least with this test, we can rule out anything where the sequence's limit does not go to zero. All right, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math. There will be more videos in this series on sequences and series coming up. Um, if you want to um, get notified when I add another video to um, my channel, just um, subscribe and you'll get an email letting you know that it's been updated. All right, thank you.